for some of you guys, this is the first time we're seeing each other. So hi, hi, I'm Becca. It's nice to meet you in person, kind of, sort of. I, I guess it's nice to have a face to put to a personality. Um, and for some of you guys, we've met at shows before, so we're seeing each other again. So hi. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you'd like to see anything demonstrated, if you'd like me to switch to a different media, please let me know in the chat. We're going to be doing the stream from 7... Um, actually, since it's 721, I will probably try to do the stream until 921. I don't want to short you guys for your time. Um, if you don't want to see anything in particular and you just want to hang out, that's cool too. I will be keeping an eye on the chat. I have another monitor behind me. Right now I'm using my Surface Pro just for streaming. Um, another monitor behind it so I can interact with you guys or I can talk to you guys. I can see what you're saying. Um, I do have a list of some stuff handy just in case you guys um, didn't necessarily have anything in mind. This is the first stream and we're all just sort of getting used to this. So in case you guys um, don't have anything specific, I'm going to start with some gesture sketches and I've already pulled up some yoga poses up. Um, then I'm going to switch over. Then I'm going to ink a potential stamp design using food aid pens. I know you guys have heard me talk about those a lot. Um, and I'm going to end with a Lucky Cat gouache painting. So if at any time um, you want me to explain something or you need me to demonstrate something, um, like I said, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of do my thing and chat as much as I can. I am currently using a document viewer, not my regular camcorder, to record this so the video quality is going to be a little lower. We may switch to Ustream in the future because my camcorder will cast to Ustream, but it won't cast to YouTube so far as I know. Um, so if you guys are cool with the switch over to Ustream and don't mind your video upside down, uh, that might be something we think about in the future. So I like to do warm up gestures when I can and I... Uh, I do a variety of topics, but lately I've been doing a lot of yoga stuff to sort of help, help me push the gesture. Oh, now it uh, comes up on my screen. So, um, I think, I think the video's up now for everybody. Um, I, <laughs> I'm also recording this and, uh, I'm starting with some gesture drawings. And uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be repeating myself a lot this first stream, mostly because there's like a delay between what shows up on my Surface Pro 3 screen, what shows up on the monitor behind, um, and what's actually going through. So, um, <laughs> this is the third time I will have said this, but I think this is my, my 7 until 9. I am going to do the stream from like 7.24 till 9.24, just because I don't want to cheat you guys out of any time. And if at any point you want me to switch media or you want me to demonstrate something in more detail or you want me to talk about something specific, and it can be it could be any almost anything, um, just let me know in the chat. Uh, I do have a monitor behind my pro so I, so I can see what you guys are saying. Um, and there might be a slight delay, slight delay, a slight bit of lag. I apologize for that. If you guys don't yet know if there's anything specific you want to see or talk about and you just want to hang out with me, that's cool too. Um, this is your stream. This is a thank you guys for your support. So um, I've got some stuff in mind just in case. You guys didn't necessarily um, have anything in particular you wanted to see and just in case nobody made it. Um, so I am starting out with some yoga drawings. And I do, I have been kind of lax. I haven't been doing the gesture drawings every day the way I should. But I highly recommend if you don't do a warm up that you start doing a warm up because I found that um, mornings I do a warm up, I uh, can produce better drawings faster. And it sort of just like gets the, the juices flowing up here and gets the muscles uh, ready to draw in my hand. Um, and they don't, your gesture drawings definitely don't have to be good by any, any shape. What's important is you do them. I have many, many, many sketchbook pages where the gesture drawings are horrible. 
Um, and I like doing yoga poses right now because I used to do ballet uh, dancers, uh, ballet dancers for a while, um, mostly because it's like contorted, unusual poses. And that's what I really need to practice is more dynamic movement. And I like doing them in color pencil because I can't go back and fix things. I have to just like accept them for what they are. So there's no, I'm not going to dedicate a lot of time trying to make something that looks technically impressive. I'm just going to focus on getting something down on the paper. And uh, I will usually fill a couple of sheets. I've been kind of remiss in doing these lately because I just have a lot on my plate. And it's not a very good excuse um, because they really don't take all that much time. Uh, if you spend like 10 to 20 minutes doing gesture drawings every day, you will see some massive improvements. I, and I say this, you know, with firsthand experience. And I will also sometimes draw on top of areas I've already drawn on just to sort of hammer home that, you know, uh, this is just meant to be an exercise. For me, it's not meant to be. If you're looking to fill up a portfolio for like an art school or for um, a contest, uh, they tend to really love figure drawing. And that's uh, what my SCAD portfolio was full of, was a lot of gesture drawing and figure drawing from when I was at UNO. And I'm just scrolling, looking for interesting poses. And I try to block in the gesture too, um, because it's really important, I think, that you, you get the, the gesture or, duh, or the essence of it um, as quickly as possible. And I've noticed that when I was doing figure drawing studies, I would get so preoccupied with the figure working that the gesture gets completely lost. And um, in comics, I think, just like in animation, being able to keep the gesture is really important because that keeps keep the end of the, the spirit. And if the uh, I've definitely noticed that, like, okay, so I, I definitely did mess up on this one. Her knee should be up against her chest. So I'm going to redraw that one. But it's not so much about um, producing an attractive drawing as it is about um, just through art snacks, a lot of lead um, that I can use. Um, what I'm physically doing and what I'm doing on the suit. So uh, if you request something in the chat and it and after I fill this page, we can move on to the next thing which is the line art for the marker test. And I actually made it a point. So, um, you know, we always talk about like how you have to make time to work on your personal projects or your comic projects. Um, because if you don't make the time, um, it's just not going to happen. And uh, it's definitely been a case with me in finding time, making time to work on 7-inch care this year. Um, I said I was going to do fewer conventions, and I technically am doing fewer conventions than I did last year or the year before. And, and um, you know, that and doing commissions from those conventions and uh, doing freelance stuff and, like, keeping up with YouTube things, right? Like, um, I end up not making the time for working and painting that I should be making. So today I really made it a priority to get to work on it and to not make excuses. And I'm glad because, um, 
you guys know, because I think most of y'all are artists yourselves, artists and writers, that it takes a really long time to make um, comic stuff or to make illustration. It takes a really long time to make comic stuff and it takes a while to make illustration as well. But when it comes to like little crafts, it takes way less time and the profit margins can be a lot better. So it's really tempting and I've noticed other artists who use conventions as like a significant part of their income. Um, I noticed other artists fall into this trap as well, where we're, we spend a lot of our time cranking out these things that aren't comics, that aren't illustration, that are kind of a distraction from what we prefer to do. Um, we spend a lot of time cranking those out because we're gonna, that's how we're going to make the majority of our money from that show um, to the point where we're not working on the pieces that, you know, that's the reason why we're doing shows in the first place. And I'm definitely guilty of that. I have a product called Sassy Buttons, and they sell, they, they're like one of my best sellers. Um, and they take a little while to make, but not nearly as long as it takes. In a cutesy style, that, that I find in such a way that I can sell it at a lower price point so that people who would like some original art can afford it. Because I'm trying to train convention audiences to, uh, to, definitely look out for and appreciate original art because that's what I have a passion for myself. I'm not really all that into prints. Um, but the sassy buttons are easier to crank out to make uh, and to make many of them and they cost a third of the price of most of my mini watercolors. Um, but I sell so many more of them so I find myself like every convention making more and more and more of them and it takes me longer and longer and longer to get through that part. And that's just, like, at least with the mini watercolors, I'm still creating. But with the sassy buttons, it is often kind of a distraction for me. So, like, I need to make it a priority not to, not to set the things that are important to me aside just because this other thing is going to make me a little bit more money. I don't know, just that, like, the whole you have to make time thing kind of hit home for me today. I think it's interesting how, um, like, in comics, illustration, writing, animation, like, things we've been told, things that we know are as truisms, like, how they can have significant relevance on a particular day and suddenly remember why it's a truism. Because like I I definitely tell <laughs> I definitely tell other artists when they talk to me at cons and they're talking about like oh you make so much stuff how do you do it well I have to make the time to do it um, right like it comes off so pat and so easy when I'm saying that but you know I <laughs> I'm guilty of it myself for sure. And a friend of mine actually asked me how I got started drawing. Um, and it basically was because I'm from this small town that doesn't, there's like nothing to do in Luling, Louisiana. Like you, you go to New Orleans, which is a 40 minute drive away. If there's no traffic, like that's what you do. Um, and my, my parents didn't let me go anywhere on school days or Sundays, um, other than like church. So, um, I just had a lot of time that, you know, that I could put into drawing. And I wasn't good at all. I was as terrible, honestly, for a really long time. And one day I'm going to show you guys um, those sketchbooks. But that's kind of like being able to just funnel this, these massive amounts of time um, into drawing when I was a kid and not having, like, the Internet... Um, which was a good and a bad thing because the internet now, as you guys know, is so full of these great resources. But um, when I was at it, but it's also full of like a lot of negativity and a lot of people who um, they might only look at like one thing you did. And it always tends to be like the thing that really just wasn't, you were having a bad day. Like that one thing out of the hundreds of things you post, that's the thing that the most people look at. Um, and it's very difficult to even try to be a perfect person every day. Like, <laughs> I can't do it. Um, 
right? So, like, I'm grateful that I kind of was making art, even if it was ugly art, I'm, I'm kind of grateful I was making art in a vacuum because I was very, I, I still am very sensitive, but I was really sensitive as a teenager, and I think, um, you know, people giving me their opinion of my art back then without me asking for their opinion of my art, it would have crushed me and I would have quit sooner. So I think it's good that I kind of developed a little bit in a vacuum. And I think, I mean, I know we all have like different origin stories, like how we got involved in this. And I'm, I'm curious about you guys as well. Um, how y'all got started, what was your inspiration? What kind of environment encouraged you to create? Kind of have a theory that we all have, like, there's similar elements to all of our stories. The need to communicate with others, a feeling of, of isolation, isolation uh, spending a lot of time reading either comics or prose um, or playing video games and wanting to contribute to that, to the community in some capacity, wanting to give to others. Yoga warms. All right, moving on to the next thing, which, so, um, some of you guys might be familiar with this. This is the book I do most of my marker tests in. This is for using Sharpie brush markers. Um, that was a fun one to do. And I have a, I have a video for these. It needs to get edited. It just needs to get up there. This was for the Spectrum Noir. Um, this was my Iron Lock Strikers piece. Again, I have a video coming up for that. This is the line art for the AliExpress brush, AliExpress brush markers. Uh, and this is the page for my Marvy fine brush. And I got a Marvy fine brush in my art snacks. And I really, really liked it. They're alcohol based markers, but they have a fine tip about the size of a um, pit pen if you guys are familiar with those. And I thought these would be really neat as um, an addition to my marker collection, like as a regular addition. So I didn't buy these to review them. If you are kind of sort of thinking about alcohol markers, you're not sure if you want to commit, maybe you just want them for spot colors, these seem like they would be a good option. My real caveat is it has a fiber nib instead of those nice, um, nylon foam nibs that I'm really, really fond of. Um, but that my problem with that is it's going to get mushy and I'm going to wreck it because I'm heavy handed. And I, I think I've told you guys that like, I, I, I crush my pins. So, uh, I'm going to start off with a line art. I'm going to do a video where I'm streaming my screen. I have Pinterest boards organized by character from Kara. And um, so there's like a Kara clothes board, a Melvina clothes board, um, a male Lilliputian clothes board, so that would be her father Rowan and her friend Tanner. And Naomi has a clothes board, and I just, whenever I see clothing that seems like it would work for them, I pin it. Um, and it's been really handy, so it's kind of nice to have a system that's like kind of sort of designed for this. It's not really designed, they, it, they didn't intend for comic artists to use it, but it works really well for me. And you can pin things from other sites, um, and you can pin things from your computer. So if you sketch something, right, and you digitize it, or you even just took a photo of it, you can put it on your Pinterest, and you can make private boards if you're working on something that, you know, you have an NDA on, or you just, you're not ready to share it. Um, you can have a private board instead. This here is a children's comic, but they don't care at all about my art, like just not. Oh, I'm like talking to the camera. I should be talking to the camera. Sorry. They, I'm so used to the camcorder and having to like speak into it, right? They don't care at all about my art. Like they love the clothes. And I'm like, you would love this book if you like these clothes. Cause I, uh, 
right? But no, 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 it doesn't work. And I'm only referencing the outfit. I'm actually probably going to do kind of like a sort of boring generic pose. So um, for those of you who are interested in, in how I construct figures, I've done a couple of tutorials on them before. Um, but, you know, repetition helps you remember things. It certainly helps me remember things. So I use a form of constructive human anatomy when I'm doing my comic craft. If you render those figures as well, like the same characters consistently, it's great. Um, I also really recommend um, Walt Stanfield's Drawn to Life. It, it, it's really static sometimes. Um, so I, I, I think that's really useful. Um, and I know everybody swears by Andrew Loomis. I know Andrew Loomis is like one of the four patron saints of, of artists. Um, his, his anatomy book, uh, how do I, okay, so the way he constructs figures is dated to be appealing to the 40s and 50s aesthetic of beauty, all right, just laying that out there, right there, and there's a lot of really valuable information in that book, the way I construct my, my skeletal, the, when I construct figures, it's a combination of his skeletal breakdown, and then Vilpu's uh, constructive human anatomy on top of it. Like, I use a mixture of the two, and I really enjoy using it that way. Um, but there are areas where Vilpu really filled in. But I also took a really good anatomy class while I was at SCAD. It was taught by Paul Hudson. It was construction, constructive human anatomy. And, like, my first day in that class, I'd had him for, for, um, concept. And so he was familiar with my work, and he was like, um, well, you have a really cartoony style. Are you sure you want to take a class like this? And it's, well, well I mean, I, I personally think we all could benefit from understanding anatomy. Any artist could benefit from understanding it because you can't ignore the rules. You can't break the rules if you don't know what the rules are. So I persisted in taking that class anyway, and I had to make a giant clay man in the middle of Savannah summer. It was like July, and I couldn't keep the clay on my ecrochet. And, and um, some of that, like, especially how I construct the very basics of the head um, with, like, the ball and then sort of, like, a shovel in front of it, that all comes from his class. Unfortunately, he's not teaching with them anymore. And I think I have some of what I learned in his class up on my blog. If you search for it, it should be, like, Constructive Human Anatomy. Um, you can also try searching the blog for Hudson, like Paul Hudson or Hudson, because I think I referred to him in those posts as it being his class. Um, teachable method of learning anatomy. So, um, I've taught this in panels at anime cons to 16 year olds. I've, I've volunteered at high schools and showed them this. I remember I was doing a, um, I was doing one of my several TA ships at Garrison, which is a charter school in Savannah, and uh, I had kids who were preparing to go, preparing to test into a art school, and I had this girl who, I swear, I swear sometimes I think, I think I meet, meet people to punish me for the person I used to be, because she was me in eighth grade, except a better artist, and she had a little bit of a and there was like, in class, she, she, she'd only seen what I presented on the board, which was mostly stuff related only to the class. It was none of my comic art. And she was, like, massively into anime. She was, she was gonna move to Japan, and she was gonna become an animator in Japan and work on anime, or she was going to become a mangaka when I was her age. And she just wouldn't listen to anything I said because it was like, yeah, but I'm gonna move to Japan. Or, yeah, but I'm gonna draw manga. And finally, I'm doing these tutorial preps, um, which is after class. And I'm, I sit down with her, and I kind of like gently push my sketchbook and I'm like just look through it okay and she when she realizes that I have a very similar style to what she had wanted she finally started listening to the things I was saying because it was like oh this works for almost anybody I hope she's doing I would never ever wish ill on anybody I just thought she was so stubborn the same way I was so stubborn that I was like oh my goodness Oh, oh goodness, because like with people who are that stubborn, 
right? Some of them definitely become like meteoric shooting stars, right? That stubbornness is just a gift. It just propels them into greatness. But for people like me who are hard little rockheads, you end up getting, you end up hitting your head a lot of times uh, before you learn anything. And I hope, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure that learning process is important, but boy, is it painful. And I don't know that I would really wish it on somebody else because it sure stings. So uh, I was so busy telling you guys anecdotal stories um, that I need to kind of go over what I'm doing right now. So um, I started with a rectangle, right? The gesture into the simplest shape it could be. Um, but I usually draw a line of action. This is a very, very simple pose because I'm very distracted chatting with you guys and um, it is hard for me. <laughs> it's hard for me to draw interesting poses when my head is half elsewhere. So I drew a line of action and then I did a rectangle and the rectangle was the torso and then I broke the torso up into two pieces, the rib cage and the pelvis and the rib cage is an egg and the pelvis is kind of a, a boxy shape. Uh, the way it was described in Hudson's class was like a cup excuse me, a cup pouring out, um, which is, which is what it is, but I don't draw a lot of naked people. Take a way to think about it, that's a very way that helps a lot of people. Um, and then I switched over to the, um, Andrew Loomis method, right, where, and I can show you guys from the book another time, because I own physical copies of his books now that they're in print again. Um, so I basically did a very simplified skeletal shape just to sort of give me a solid foundation of what I'm doing. And that includes like kind of stick figure arms and a stick figure pelvis. And then I drew the head, which is a ball. And then coming from the ball is basically a spade shape. And um, if you guys ever need a tutorial where I step through this step by step and explain what I'm doing and why, you are very smart people. Um, so I don't always know how to help you guys, and I, you, you kind of stick with me, I thank you so much. I spent too much time doing it, and I haven't spent enough time thinking about it, please let me know, and I would be more than happy to go through it with you guys. Or if you have an alternate way of handling it, let me know that too, because I'm always interested in that, and I'm also always interested in sharing that with other people because um, human anatomy just didn't click for me until I read the Glenville Poo drawing manual, right? Like I couldn't remember how to, I mean, I know we had two arms and two legs, I remember that, but like the, the way to make it look like a person, um, I understand how important alternate methods of education can be because I'm basically five eyeballs in width. Um, right there's an eye space in between your two eyes and if you're drawing a style that has larger for example whose eyes are literally mushed together and there's no line between the eyes it's just two boops right um and you know i'm not gonna say it doesn't work because i've seen people make it work right but it doesn't work for me it doesn't look good when i do it so i try to always at least keep an eye space in between my eyes um I will sometimes go wider than that, but I don't really go less than one unless I'm doing like a style test and the artist I'm trying to learn from has that in their style. Okay, so we've got the eyes, we've got the nose, and so I had a really hard time learning how to draw noses until I started thinking about them as variations of triangles. So I usually start off with something that's going, so for like a a side, a three-quarter view like this. I, Kara has like a weird, like, like her nose is more upturned than mine. It's very, almost pug, but not quite. She's got a weird nose. Um, on purpose, I wanted her to have a weird nose. I wanted her to look cute, but also have like human looks. Because something that always bothered me about how women are drawn in media is we are drawn as children or beautiful women or hags. And that's, that's it. That's the spectrum. I mean, look at like Archie comics, for example. There's just like no variety in women. A little girl character who has, you know, specific quirks. 
and I would definitely zoom in on this, but uh, the document viewer, I can, oh yeah, that's right, I can very gently, very slowly, because I don't want to give anybody whiplash. Let's see. And I have my document viewer attached to my uh, stand with a rubber band. So <laughs> we'll see how all this works. really a, a marker test right it's not it's not intended to be consumed as like a standalone piece but I'm gonna go ahead and fix it because one of the nice things about constructive anatomy is you realize your mistakes before you're too far in and then you can fix it so right now I've pretty much got everything fairly blocked in like this could work for a generic person in in general um, I'll like block in the gesture of the hands before I start delineate delineating fingers and stuff um, and that which means um unless I have like so um if I have like a specific vision in mind for something and I want to get it down quickly I will usually draw a thumbnail sketch to the side like up in the corner um, just so I can capture the feeling and the emotion as quickly as possible and I, I recommend working in just like a variety of ways like pretty much whatever you need to do to make the piece you're working on that specific piece you're working on look as good as possible. So um, it is handy to have a process that makes your work easier to do, but don't become too much of a slave to your process if possible. Um, that's something I've really had to struggle to work away from. Um, when I was a student at SCAD, I was producing so much work um, that I really had to rely on my process because I just didn't have the brain capacity free to be super creative at all stages. Um, so I got overly reliant on having that process help me out with a lot of the work. And then um, print that and be able to work from that printout. And as a convention artist and somebody who reviews art supplies, I just don't necessarily have time for that. That's kind of a luxury. being able to, or developing flexibility, because I it sure didn't come easy, developing flexibility really helped me sort of um, regain control over that and regain flexibility. Of this marker test sort of sketched out and um usually what i like to do i don't always do it is um but i usually like to draw something in the background like flowers or embroidery just something else that requires more of the markers used in the test honest Okay, so these flowers are looking pretty scraggly right now, um, and that's because I know I can fix them up when I'm inking them, so it's, there's no need to be super tight. At least I think I know I can fix them up. I've done it before. It doesn't always work that way. It's a little bit like magic. Sometimes it backfires on you. Me drawing is like um, Terry Pratchett's sort of magic <laughs> backfires. Anytime I need it desperately, it's like, no. Nah. No, that's okay. All right, so that is that for so, 
sort of Kara line arts in an alternate style. Um, and they're blue lines, so if you guys are, are going blind and can't see it, I apologize. Um, and I can work on finishing that one. Um, I am sort of torn. I contacted a couple of stamp, like digital stamp selling stores, and one of them got back to me and they release a coloring book. Or a color along with me is really the more accurate. Um, and that way they wouldn't have to be reliant on their own drawing. To improve my own art. So I thought maybe if I released a color along with me, um, this is what people in Japan would use to like sign their names, for example. It's, so it's called a sign pen. And it has a little flexible sort of uh, rubber nib in it, which makes it ink differently than, say, uh, Pentel pocket brush, or in fact, I have a Pentel Curare, which is basically just an overpriced Pentel pocket brush, right? And, or like pit pins, which are more common in the US. I was hoping with the, um, with the figure drawing warm up, my inking would be a little bit better, but I'm kind of talking too much for the inking to be good. 